to this I don't know how to act, don't know how to adapt to this situation Not used to this, no I'm not I better let myself Give in to love, believe in us No matter what it does to my heart Not used to this, no I'm not It was like if we were to waste These moments The light poets to me This is the Pixel 4a. Now, back in August 2020, Google had launched the Pixel 4, continuing their line of more wallet-friendly smartphones. The previous generation Pixel 3a had a normal version and an XL model, but this one right here has the normal version with no other size. And in fact, this phone comes in just one size, one spec, and one color, just black. Simple. Also, yes, that was Google's motto when they were launching this phone, to keep it simple. Recently, they have also included a limited edition color called the Barely Blue. And that color is literally just Barely Blue. Although this color is only available in some countries, it looks cool. Anyways, is this really the ideal budget phone or is this something you get? more than the normal budget phone. I love that approach of Google giving users the bare essentials and a super affordable package. Not a lot of crazy features, no gimmicks, not even an Excel model 2 at this time around, just the basics. And well, nearly a crazy year with the specked out super phones later, this still remains one of my favorite phones to both use and recommend. Now, I guess we can all agree that Pixels have really good cameras. Mostly just because of their computational photography, they can create beautiful clicks. And also, even if you're a non-professional and have shaky hands, with the help of AI, they help stabilize the video you're filming or even when you're trying to click a photo. We have the same case here in the Pixel 4a. The camera setup might be slightly misleading. You might think it's a dual camera or a quad cam setup. It's not. It's just a single 12.2 megapixel camera with a flashlight. And also include that with the 8 megapixel front facing camera. But even when having one single camera on the back, it clicks superior quality photos. By launching this phone, they have bumped up our expectations in photo and video quality of the next budget pixel. And they have never sacrificed the best in the market camera quality, even with the launch of their budget phones. The design isn't super flashy, but it's not ugly or anything, at least to me. Anyway, it was refreshing to see a design like this on a pixel after big bezels and notches. And now we can see Google making strange design changes in their Pixel 6. Not that I hate it, it's a cool design. Now right off the back, Google's new intention for this phone was to keep it simple. And they did. No shiny glass back, no metal, just soft polycarbonate. And over time, it's been okay. I don't love it or hate it, I think it's fine. It's one of those things you can't get mad at because of the price. And honestly, there are phones which could be worse. This phone is very solid. It's nice and lightweight. The buttons are also super clicky. The screen still looks great, even with all the other awesome super high-end displays out there. To look at obviously 60 hertz for me is no big of a deal. And of course, some people may find it tough to switch over from a 120 hertz screen. Now heading over to the numbers, it is a 5.8 inches 1080p display and you can also stream videos from YouTube which are available in 4K. On the top, it has a selfie hole punch cutout. You might take some time to get used to it, but for me, it's no big deal and trust me, it looks way better than the notch. Something that continues to stand out to me are the speakers. They are not the best or anything, but they are very solid. And again, this is one of those things that brings us right back. These still impressed me for a budget phone. And you may not expect a budget phone to have good speakers, at least not as these.
But speaking of sound, in case you forgot or didn't know, this phone does have a headphone jack. So now, heading towards the next topic, to the feature which makes this phone stand apart from the others, the camera. As I mentioned earlier, there is only one 12.2 megapixel camera with a f1.7 lens on the back with a flashlight and also an 8 megapixel front facing camera. I just wish they had just thrown in an ultra wide. So in the camera app, it's very simple UI and just like the other smartphones, it has digital zoom, but Google has claimed that it makes it look like a less zoomed up photo with its AI. It also has portrait mode, which basically tries to give that depth effect to an object or the person you're filming. The night mode is amazing in this phone. I would say this is one of the best night mode photography cameras out there in the budget smartphone market. You can now see a less grainy image and taking videos at night is grainy as usual. They can improve that in the next budget pixel. But taking videos at day is very clear and vibrant. The images taken from this phone look very natural and there is no trace or boost of any unwanted color or sharpness. So that's nice. Again, nothing to really complain about. Android 11 has been nice as well. I haven't installed the 12 beta just yet, but I cannot wait for the full official release of Android 12. As we know, the 4a will be among the first to get that update. Results will vary among and we obviously couldn't talk about a pixel without gushing about the cameras, at least a little bit, right? Of course, certain things got dropped to cut costs, like secondary set of cameras. For example, there is no 4K video recording at 60 frames per second either, but there is 4K 30. Again, for the price, it's going to be very hard to find something that'll be able to match the Google's image processing. So is the 4A worth picking up in 2021? Also, I think Google made such a right move with this line of phones and I cannot wait to see the next iteration. All in all, now comes the question. Is this really the ideal budget phone? Yes, yes it is. I know this phone has some downsides, but I think this performs well if you compare it to other budget phones in this price range. And also one of the biggest plus points is that it has an awesome camera. So yes, I think it's the ideal budget phone. It has an amazing battery, good performance and good build quality. What else do you need in a budget phone at this price range? I have also done an unboxing video of this phone, so I'll leave a link below in the description. Make sure you watch that. If you want to buy this phone, I have linked that too in the description. So what do you think of the 4A in 2021? Please don't hesitate to drop down a comment and let me know if you have any ideas or queries. If you love my work and my videos, please support by subscribing to my channel and switch on the post notifications to see my future videos. So thank you so much guys for watching this video. I will see you guys on the next one. Until then, stay safe. Hello.